understanding your client, understanding where you fit in, um, you know, understand that a job, like who's your audience, you know, Barkley, what if you're like, how do you handle that? You know, when, when you're going in, um, to, to a consulting role at a, maybe a new client or a new office or something like that, what's, how can that affect maybe the way you approach what your given task is? Sure. It's, you know, it, it is, it's always about understanding the full project, understanding the scope, um, where sort of the end product is going to fall. And, and, you know, most of our end products fall with drilling a well or something like that, or the closing of an acquisition on the due diligence side or securing some agreement of some sort. Um, there are other projects that are like you mentioned, cleanup projects, or, you know, you're trying to clean up files or clean up things either on the record side on, on certain elements of, of agreements or division order side, even, even to that extent, but understanding the full scope of what those projects and what the end goal is. You always want to know the end goal. You always want to know is the person you're talking to sort of the final reporting person that's going to see this and is going to either benefit from it, or is it going further up the ladder? And so understanding those, then you can better assess, um, how to develop and, and outline the project. And one of the things I always try to do, um, you know, as I mentioned on, uh, your client's hiring you for the things and the skills, you know, and, and so they're either doing that because they don't have the time to do it. As you mentioned, they don't, uh, they don't have the staff to do it, uh, or they just don't want to do it. And so they're hiring you for your expertise and things that if, you know, they may not know the things that are in the, that are entailed in the project. They know the outline or they know the high level, of done, but they don't have the details. And so I use that as an effort to what I call managing up and sort of managing into my client, the things that they may not know how to ask. And so looking at those things and looking, if you know, the end product and, and I have this, I have the ability to do this because I've worked in various through with various disciplines and in, inside one get code. So I know how they work. I know where the information goes, uh, either from the engineering team or, you know, from the accounting team, finance team, I usually know where the elements of the, the land information goes. And, um, so by knowing that and knowing those projects and how they affect those various other disciplines, I can kind of manage up to things where where they may not know, they may not, may not know how this affects, um, a, uh, the, the marketing department. And so by knowing those things, I can then sort of help them and guide them along and give them information they may not be asking me about. Um, and just pushing that along and say, Hey, here's, here's why you want to know that, or here's why this is, um, Pooling provisions may be one of those things that they're not thinking about in, in a certain project or even in your, your world while you're leasing. Um, it, it's not so much in your, uh, in like a Louisiana or Oklahoma, but in Texas, you know, pooling provisions can, um, can be a big deal. And so, um, you kind of want to understand and, and know those, and those are areas where, you know, as a field land man or an in, or a project manager in the field, you can help them along where if you've got a young in-house land man or a land man that hadn't worked Texas, working a Texas project, you can guide them along and, and push that information up and help them frame to where they're more successful and their developers or their, their, uh, development department on the drilling side or, or production side can, um, be more efficient in developing the field or a field. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a great point to make if, if you're on the flip side, you're the in-house side and you're bringing in a group of people to help with whatever it might be, the more information you can share with them about what is this for, what's the end result, who's going to use this information, maybe allow you to tailor your product and your deliverable such that an engineer or such that the finance department, whatever it might be, marketing, whatever it might be, can, can use that information. And you're not going to have to go back and circle back. That's the killer in all these jobs. It's like the you don't have that planning and you're not informed as a consultant about what's the end use here. You can't be proactive with your decision-making. You can't capture that little bit of extra when you're looking at something or you're working through a task or working through a thousand well package, um, that, that would be beneficial 
in hindsight. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I got, I got, you know, I'll, I'll give this little antidote from, you know, probably 20 years ago, um, you know, was asked to put together a, a forecast and a budget for uh, buying some leases on a prospect and go drill a well. And I put it together and, um, you know, I was a staff landman at the time and I put it up the ladder and all the different components of it. We were having to do a farm out. We were having to buy some leasehold. We were having to buy some ground floor leasehold. We were buy, have to buy some HPP leasehold. Put it all together, put it, put a budget together, passed it up. And, you know, it sort of fell on flat ears. And I had to present to our, our president at the time saying, Hey, here's a project we want to do. Um, this is what I think it's going to cost. And man, I got like just deaf ears. Like there's no way that's going to cost that much. And, and, you know, this is part of the confidence that helped me was, yeah, it was a crush. They were like, we can't do that project. It's going to cost too much. We're not going to do it. Or you're going to find a cheaper way to do it. Little by little, we, we started doing it and we put it together. And man, I think I was like $50,000 off my budget. And so, you know, which was very small. It was call it 5% of my budget that I was off. And, um, that's what it ended up costing us to do it. And so they piecemealed it together and we did little bits and pieces of it here and there. But at the end of the day that, you know, said, Hey, wait a minute. Okay. I, I got chastised for that. Yeah. And, but at the end of the day, I'm vindicated. that's kind of where it's, <laughs> that's kind of where it landed. And, um, and so I, you know, those are, those are things that over just out of experience you get that you determine and, and find out that. Hey, I can do this. I am doing it. You know, it's all a guesstimation to some extent, but the better you can guesstimate, the, the better that is. And remember, we're doing the same thing that an engineering team is doing on forecasting the, the total production of a well. You know, when you look at ultimate recovery of, a, of an oil and gas well, they're forecasting a line and they're saying, hey, this well is going to do, it's producing 2,000 barrels a day now and it's going to do. Um, you know, half a million barrels and 10 BC up of gas at the end of its life. And, and they're, they're just forecasting based on the, the things that they know and the experience that they have in their industry. And we're doing the same thing just on a, a, a different commodity. Yeah. We're time. doing it on land and on time and on those sort of things. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's the same work. And, uh, you just, you're just applying it to, to a different element. 